Thank you, Jeff. Uh, as Jeff said, uh, many of you know Levin First because we handle the unique workers' comp programs that we've developed for the construction and for the real estate industries that many of you are members of. And many of you know us because we insure your buildings, we insure your liability, we insure your vehicles. Um, but one thing that we've never really done is health insurance. And about four or five years ago when, we, when the Affordable Care Act was being developed and health insurance became a lot more complicated than it used to be, we decided that we wanted to team up with a firm that was, had an infrastructure, had a whole uh, team of support, had people that were staying on top of the new rules, the type of paperwork that companies were going to have to complete and because it's more than just delivering the costs and the options but also making sure that everyone stays in compliance with what was, what was going to be happening with the Affordable Care Act. So we um, teamed up with Jamie Schutzer and Joe Mishito of JDM Associates here in White Plains and, and their um, office staff and we had a good relationship and what we've been doing is referring many of our clients over there, and I think you'll see today from Jamie and Joe's presentation, their expertise in um, health, health insurance, the benefit industry, and what has occurred over the last year, and what will be occurring. So I'm gonna now turn it over to Jamie. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, good afternoon, and uh, thank you all for coming out tonight. The announcements are over, the socializing and networking is over, and now is the fun stuff. <laughs> Health insurance. I mean, come on. It always gets the room going. Um, but anyway, uh, I had the pleasure of, of being here uh, last year, about a year ago, a little bit more. Uh, and I guess you didn't, uh, didn't torture you enough back then and actually coming back for some more. Um, but our goal today is to kind of keep this very high level. Uh, you know, the Affordable Care Act is, is approaching four years um, since it's been passed. There's been uh, a lot of provisions and, and regulations, and there's been a lot of changes and delays and uh, repeals. And, um, and what we want to do is really drill down to how this is going to impact uh, you and your businesses, mostly small businesses, um, in 2014. You know, we're now into March, and we started to see what these plans are, are like, the, the ACA compliant plans, you know, pricing, and again, our goal is really to kind of give you that high-level overview and really answer your questions. Um, you know, we do this on a day-to-day -day basis, and, and we hear them all, um, and we're going to try to capture what you want to know, but if there is something specifically um, after we're done, then you could uh, certainly ask away. So. Okay, so let, let's start with uh, the small group market and really what's, what's happening uh, in 2014. And, you know, a lot of the things you hear on the news um, might not necessarily have an impact in New York. New York's a very unique market, uh, um, very progressive, uh, pure community rated. So a lot of the changes and, you know, hearing about people's rates going up 300% and having the policies canceled, a lot of that doesn't really impact us uh, in our neck of the woods. But um, what has happened, and what is continuing to happen in 2014, is that um, in the small group market, which is defined as two to 50 eligible employees, that the plan that you have in place uh, prior to your renewal in 2014 will be um, replaced with what they call uh, an ACA compliant plan. And that's uh, uh, simply better terms of um, you know, your, your plan is being canceled, and here's your new plan. Um, you know, for most of the carriers, that's happening upon your renewal, as I mentioned, in 2014. There were uh, a couple of extenuating circumstances where carriers chose to get out of the market uh, December 31st, 2013, and say, you know, you need to find a new plan as of January 1st. But uh, for the most part, again, this is happening upon renewal in 2014. Um, a lot of these changes that are happening is heard a lot about the exchange. Uh, in New York, we call that the New York State of Health. They're advertising like crazy. Um, it's New York's version of healthcare.gov. So these changes obviously apply to what's going on within that exchange, 
but a lot of also what we're going to be talking about does apply to off exchange. So even if you say, you know what, I want to have absolutely nothing to do with the exchange, I don't want any part of it, um, these changes are all going to still impact you. So um, what are some of the changes? And again, on a, on a high level uh, overview, um, and, and what I really, again, didn't want to, to torture you with all the details, but just point out some of the uh, important facts. Um, one is that the new ACA plans uh, all are covering dental, and that's pediatric dental, just for children under the age of 19. Um, yes? Can you explain ACA? Uh, ACA, sorry, uh, Affordable Care Act. Obamacare, PPACA, uh, well, uh, whatever other names you might have for it. Uh, ACA, sorry, uh, Affordable Care. Yeah, our business is all full of acronyms and uh, ACA is a tip of the iceberg. But uh, anyway, so um, the pediatric dental, so all your plans, again, I'm specifically talking in the small group market, two to 50 eligible employees, also actually in the individual market, so if anybody chooses to go out and buy their own plan, all those plans do need to cover um, pediatric dental, and uh, obviously there's a co cost associated to that, but um, all your new plans beginning in 2014 will include pediatric dental. The other thing is that all plans will have a, a metallic level uh, name, right? So you've, I've been talking about this for three to four years, platinum, gold, silver, and bronze. Every plan is going to fall into one of those categories. and. You know, obviously, a platinum plan is going to be better than a bronze plan. Um, but each one of those plans, what makes them a platinum, gold, silver, and bronze is, is the actuarial value. So basically, in terms of um, you know how that impacts you, is what is it going to cost you out of your pocket when you use the plan? Platinum plan, you're going to pay less out of pocket when you use it. You're going to pay more in premium. Bronze plan, you're going to have a higher deductible, more out of pocket expenses, but it's going to cost you less. So when you're evaluating your options. You know, it's just kind of like what you've been doing in the past is, you know, this plan has a $10 copay, this plan has a $30 copay. Um, but every plan had to fit into one of these actuarial values, which meant the carriers had to um, um, uh, tweak their plans to fit into one of those. So, uh, again, no carrier had a plan that was going to fit exactly into one of those actuarial values, which is why, again, all these plans are going to be changing uh, in 2014. Um, one benefit, which is a nice feature, is that all plans are required to have an out-of-pocket maximum. So a lot of times, uh, you know, if you had a copay only type plan, and you would just continue to pay copays. Or if you had a deductible, you know, might have an out-of-pocket, but you would continue to pay. All plans are now required to have an out-of-pocket maximum. And that basically is a number that um, represents the most that you would pay out of your pocket in a given year. Okay. Um, so when you're reviewing your plans and you see that out-of-pocket maximum, basically what that's saying is that's your worst case scenario. Um, there's new strict underwriting requirements. Um, again, in New York, it doesn't really impact us because we've had these strict underwriting requirements for 20 years. But again, you may be hearing in the news about um, you know, people whose uh, plans are going up 200, 300%. And that's because in the past they were able to underwrite and they're able to give a policy for a young 25-year-old, you know, a much lower rate than someone who's, you know, in their 50s who have health conditions. Um, that's all gone. But in New York, it's been gone for 20 plus years. It's called community rate. And um, standard tier multiplier. So what you might find uh, when you do get your renewal is that, um, and again, specifically more for the businesses, the small businesses, is that you're going to see a larger increase for your single rates and your family rates are actually not going to be as large. Um, provider networks, another very, very hot topic, uh, and it's actually catching the eye of, of the state and really the federal government. Um, what the carriers have had to do is they've, there's been pressure on them to bring costs down, and really more so in the individual market than in the, uh, in, in the um, small business market. But uh, in order to do that, um, they had to find a way for them to reduce their costs. And how they did that is really turn around to the provider community, doctors, hospitals, uh, and basically come out with new fee schedules. And instead of paying a doctor you know, $100 for a particular office visit, they're now going to pay $70. So what that has created 
is um, the doctors revolt, if you will, and the doctors are saying, look, I cannot survive on these small fees. Um, and I'm talking Medicaid level reimbursements. Uh, and they're dropping out of the networks. And they're saying, you know what, we don't want to participate in this network. This is the exchange, we're at, we're not in. So um, what you're finding is, and even in New York, is a lot of the carriers are building these um, narrow or skinny networks. And so it's important when you're out there and you're buying your insurance plan, whether it's as an individual, whether it's as a business owner, whether it's as an employee of a, of a company, is to pay attention to those networks. They are changing. Um, and you know, you always want to confirm with your doctor, do you take this network, do you take that network? I'm sure they'll give you an earful. Um, doctors love to complain. Well, uh, yes? Well, see, that would be changing. 2015, since everybody's settling into what we're getting in 2015, see, could it change that dramatically, or is this only... As far as, as, far as what? Pricing, or as far as... Pricing, coverage, deductibles... No, I think it's going to be, it's going to be, yeah, I mean, and I'll hold all the questions until after. Um, that's okay, but just to answer that question was, what's 2015 gonna look like? And um, you know, there's not gonna be enough time because believe it or not, the insurance companies are filing their plans and their rates for 2015 um, in May. So I mean, you, you, you have three, four months of kind of seeing what's happening in 2014. So they're really gonna be going more or less based on past information, so. Um, but uh, did you We're gone? All right, here we go. Um, okay, so I mentioned before New York State of Health. Uh, this is New York's um, health benefit exchange. Uh, this is, again, the equivalent of the healthcare.com. Whenever you hear healthcare.gov, just for those who live in New York and have businesses in New York, it does not apply to you. Um, it's New York State of Health. If you haven't checked out their website, I encourage you to Google New York State of Health. Play around with it a little bit, see what it's about. Um, but from an enrollment standpoint, we're at New York is the poster child. This is one of the six, quote unquote, success stories of the exchanges because we didn't have the crashing of the systems. I mean, there was definitely some bumps and bruises the first uh, few weeks, but um, this slide actually needs to be changed because uh, as the end of February, there was 500,000 members enrolled in the New York State of Health. There is now, um, I believe the number I saw that came out last week was about 590,000. So, um, you know, from a numbers perspective, they're doing great. Um, when you break it down, who's enrolled, who are those 600,000 people? Um, it, it's questionable. I mean, did those people have coverage and they lost it and now they're getting it? Um, and because a lot of plans were terminated and these people had to find coverage, um, the other thing is, is close to that, 50% uh, of that 600,000 are uh, Medicaid enrollees. So they're not even in the, in the private healthcare system, they're in Medicaid, they're in the government run. Um, and, and, you know, at some point it's going to cost everyone. But um, that's the success story, 600,000 members uh, in the New York State of Health. There's two types of exchanges in New York State of Health. There's the individual exchange, which is where you would go as an individual person shop for your plan, buy it, secure it. Um, if you're eligible for a subsidy based on your income, you get it there uh, and you secure your coverage. The other exchange is the SHOP, which stands for um, Small Business Health Options Program. Uh, that's for small businesses, two to 50 eligible, eligible employees, okay? As of today, that definition of eligible is really up to you. If you wanna make it 40 hours to be eligible, you can be 40 hours. Come 2016, it's slated now that the definition, uh, the federal definition of a small group will be two to 100, okay? And it's very important for any businesses that are between 51 and 100, anybody's in the room, in this room that is in that category, um, I would suggest now to start speaking to your, um, your, your legislators on the state level, dealing with the federal level, because the ramifications when that merges into the small group market is going to be tremendous for those businesses. So um, I know we're doing that on our behalf of our association uh, is, is, is trying to really inform and educate the um, elected officials that you know, this is something that needs to be looked at and maybe delayed. I promise no more questions, but oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, why are the ramifications going to be? 
Um, the question is, is why the ramifications for those businesses 51 to 100? Because um, the way the rating is now is they're rated uh, manually, so they're outside of this community rated pool. And generally, those rates are going to be substantially cheaper than what you're going to get in the 2 to 50 market. In addition, the plan design selection that you could have uh, when you're over 50 employees is much more diverse um, options of plans. When you get in the 2 to 50 market, you're going to basically be taking plans off the shelf. There's, most plans don't have added network coverage. Um, and, you know, so if you're used to this benefit plan and you have, a, you know, a plan with in and out of network coverage and you have this plan design, you know, this is your plan, you're going to now have to be merged into that small group market and there's going to be um, not only a financial um, impact, but it's also going to be from a plan design perspective, you're going to have much fewer choices. Uh, and in addition to that, um, there are certain carriers that aren't in the small group market that are in the large group market. So you're also losing choice. Um, as I mentioned, a large majority of the enrollment in the exchange is through the individual exchange, is through the individuals. Um, the shop enrollment, so again, that small business, is virtually nothing. Uh, you know, maybe five or 10,000, maybe that number up, by the way. Uh, but uh, it, it's a very low amount. Um, here's part of the reason why. There's low enrollment in the shop, and specifically in, um, in Westchester County. So the whole idea of this exchange is really about bringing choice and bringing selection and plan designs and having this robust marketplace. You know, think of uh, you know, going online and buying something and having all these choices, right? Um, here's who's participating in the uh, shop exchange in Westchester County. It's Oxford, and it's a new company called Health Republic. Um, so the choice selection uh, is, is not uh, as robust as um, I would like to have seen it, um, but there are certain reasons why carriers chose not to participate, and um, you know maybe in the next year or two more carriers will, will enter into the marketplace. But uh, the whole concept of choice and, and um, you know, employee elections is, is really limited to uh, Oxford six plans and Health Republic I think has seven plans. Um, um, some of the plans are standards, so kind of defined by the state. This is what the plan designs have to be. And a carrier like Oxford said, that's all we're putting in. The plans that you tell us we need to put in is what we're putting in. Health Republic put in a couple more. So again, the carriers weren't jumping to be in it. Um, Health Republic, as I mentioned, is a new carrier. Joe's going to go into a little bit more about them. Um, another problem is there's limited network coverage outside of New York and New Jersey. So these two plans only have network access network access in New York and New Jersey. So if you have an employee in Connecticut, works in Westchester, lives in Connecticut, or if you have an employee that works remotely from their house in another part of the country, there's no network. So you as a business owner, as you're trying to make a decision, do I want to be in the shop exchange? Is this a good fit for our company? Um, you know, I tell you, if you have an employee that lives in Connecticut, it's not going to be a good fit because they're not going to have a network. Um, and the other thing is that most of the, the, the plans are in-network only. So anyone who's used to having the ability to go out of network and, um, and, and use, you know, make the decision to use an out-of-network doctor, most of these plans are going to be in-network only. Okay, um, so what are the advantages of on and off exchange? So as, as again, this is specifically for small businesses, and your evaluation of deciding, you know, I want to look at the exchange, I want to look off the exchange. Um, here are your benefits of being on the exchange. One is there's no participation requirements. Okay? That means basically if you have an employee group of 10 or 15 employees and you want to go into the exchange and only two of your employees take it, no issue. They'll take the two, no questions asked. Um, where when you go off exchange, the carriers are going to have participation requirements. So if you're not meeting their participation requirements, they're not going to be willing to write you. So if you're concerned about participation, and, and participation just basically means the number of eligible employees and how many of those actually enroll in the plan. So for example, um, you know, a company like Oxford is going to require 51%. So if you have 10 employees, they're going to want six enrolled. Um, on the exchange, you have 10 employees, you roll in there, uh, one takes it, that's good. 
which by the way is one of the reasons why the carriers aren't thrilled to be in there because what you have is adverse selection. Um, only those who are going to use it uh, are going to take it. Tax credits, small business tax credits. I think I talked about that uh, last year. If anybody's taking advantage of the small business tax credit program, not very um, overly popular. I think they're expecting much larger numbers. But the only place to get a tax credit, small business tax credit, will be on the exchange uh, beginning in 2014. So if anyone has done that in the past um, and you want to continue to get that tax credit, um, the exchange would be the place to go. And that's going to phase out too in the next couple of years. Employee choice. Employee choice being that you know, the choice is that you have Oxford and you have Health Republic. But if you wanted to offer um, all the platinum plans, you know, maybe there's four of those, you can open those up to your employees. So you're not kind of handcuffing them to say, here's the plan that we're offering, take it or leave it. So um, you get more of that in the exchange. And from an administrative uh, standpoint, it's um, a single bill. You know, the administration is supposed to be simple. So if you have different plans and different carriers, you can get one bill. It's going to be all, um, you know, all, you know, from an administrative standpoint, not the, you know, all these different bills. So your benefits off exchange, additional carriers. Um, I didn't mention Aetna in the exchange. Uh, Aetna is one in particular that's on the small group market right now, very, very competitive. Joe will talk about that. But um, you're going to have different, uh, different um, additional options outside the exchange. A uh, wider range of plan designs. As I mentioned, Oxford is offering what they have to offer. Standard plan designs, that's it. When you go off exchange, Oxford has another dozen plan designs to choose from. Um, so you're going to only get that outside of the exchange. Um, most of the carriers are national, uh, have full tri-state access, and are also national carriers. So if you do have employees that are outside the tri-state area, they'll have a network. If you're traveling and you want to see a doctor, you're going to have a national network. Um, they're more flexible in, in the submissions. You know, obviously, the exchange is, is, is this third-party body, and it's, um, you know, it's new, and uh, you start to hear the nightmare stories of, of you know, they're not, people aren't getting bills, and they're not getting the premiums to the carriers. Um, here you're dealing directly with the carrier, and you're not going to have that issue. And, and then finally, is, um, they establish billing systems. You are uh, you know, dealing with companies that have been in this business for, for several years, and um, I know we don't love them, the carriers. I think we all probably have our nightmare stories that we can all talk about. But um, I mean, these companies have been in this business and, and they've been providing health insurance for many, many years and their systems are proving. Um, and uh, you know, so there's less of a question mark there. So that's um, my portion. Uh, I'll come back up later if you have questions. And uh, Joe's gonna go through this. Hello everybody. I think Ken summed it up when he said it's a lot more complicated today. And today I had two meetings with groups, we had open enrollment meetings, and I have to tell you, uh, to get the message across, I think a lot of employees recognize there's going to be change, and they're more willing to embrace the change, but it's still very difficult. So today what I'd like to talk about is a sample group of about 10 employees based in Westchester. You know, where should they go for their coverage? Should they go off exchange or on exchange? And I think, as Jamie mentioned, there's some advantages of being uh, purchasing coverage on the exchange, but there's also advantages off the exchange. So what I'd like to start with is a typical group in, New in Westchester that we see has the Oxford Liberty HMO plan, which is a very popular plan. It's an in-network only plan, it's a gated plan, and you need referrals, but there's no deductible or co-insurance in network, which employees like, because all they have is pretty much their co-pays, and they don't have these significant expenses if they're admitted to the hospital or have an outpatient procedure in the hospital. So what's happening is, as that plan is eliminated and the new metallic plans are available, the popular plan that really is as close to that as possible is the Oxford Gold Plan, which is at the 80th actuarial value. Well, that plan is about, depending upon how many singles and couples, that's like a 15% or 16% increase. Again, it varies by, by um, the breakdown of the group. But with that plan, now you're introducing an in-network deductible of $1,000 a single, $2,000 a family. Uh, and then you have um, situations where the employee could be out of pocket as much as 4000 before you're in a position where the plan's paying 100%. So I think now you're going to a group and you're saying, well, you know what? Not only do you have a 15% increase, 
you could have more significant out-of-pocket uh, out dollars. And I think in New York, especially in the Northeast, we're not accustomed to these plans. You know, more, more uh, south and, and out west, they see a network deductible, deductibles and co-insurance. We don't see that from any of our clients. So that's a big change. I did a meeting today, and one woman said, well, um, this Oxford Liberty Gold, if I go into the hospital and my son goes into the hospital, am I going to be out of pocket $8,000? And the answer was yes. So it is a big change, um, and we're seeing a lot of groups that want to move to the Liberty Gold are struggling with it. So as Jamie mentioned, there's a, a carrier that's off exchange, Aetna, that is not available uh, on the exchange, and Aetna now is actually taking business away. It's a competitor of Oxford. Uh, Oxford's always been very successful, but now we're seeing Aetna with, with two or three plans that seem to be popular. One is the Aetna Community Plan, the other one is an Aetna Gold or an Aetna Silver, depending upon how many employees you have. If you have 10 or more enrolled, you could have three plans. And the advantage of that is the Aetna Community Plan, which, well actually it's not for a Westchester-based group, but outside of Westchester and the boroughs, it has a community network where it's a platinum plan. There's no deductible in the network, there's low co-pays, very little out-of-pocket expenses, and then you can introduce an Aetna Gold, which has a national network, but yes, in network deductibles, and co-insurance, but they have a better price point than Oxford. More things are subject to the deductible, like lab work, x-rays, and MRIs, which is going to be a huge surprise to some employees as they go for labs and MRIs and CAT scans. Because with the Oxford plan, they were either paying co-pays or the new Oxford Liberty Gold, that wasn't subject to the deductible. But the Aetna Gold is getting play because the premium points are better. You could probably get a, a rate pass from your Oxford Liberty HMO. Uh, and companies are looking for a rate pass, and if you could introduce an Aetna community plan with it, with very little out-of-pocket expenses, it's a good combination where employees can pick and choose. So we're seeing a lot of movement from Oxford, probably 10 of our groups. Uh, we see three of them moving into Aetna, which is a surprise to us. Not, not a surprise today, because we see the plan designs, we see the price points. But I think that's good news off exchange, is now we have a competitor to Oxford. But again, still a change in the plans. Another third option uh, available is Health Republic. It's a new company, uh, a lot of growing pains. It's, a, it's actually a not-for-profit co-op company. They utilize a network called MagnaCare. Uh, MagnaCare is a pretty uh, good network. Uh, it's pretty popular up here in Westchester. Um, their price points are ridiculously low, so you could actually get a platinum plan um, with very little out-of-pocket expenses. Again, no deductible or co-insurance, low co-pays, and you're talking about a reduction from your current Oxford Liberty HMO plan. There's probably a good 20-25% differential in premium between uh, the Oxford plans and the Health Republic plan. So I'm seeing a number by now for profits move because they're concerned about employee out-of-pocket expenses and it's very low at the platinum and cost. And um, we're seeing groups move in this direction, but we're seeing a tremendous amount of growing pains where they just can't take on the new enrollments. Um, it's very hard for us to get a response out of them. We can call up and there's an hour wait just to get a hold of somebody. So it's very difficult dealing with us in public, but as a broker, we feel compelled to show that because it does provide some sort of a solution, uh, in my opinion, a short-term solution, because I just don't think they're going to be able to sustain those rates. So again, you're looking at Oxford really as the lead carrier, and now we're seeing some movement in Health Republic. Uh, if a group is concerned about price and they're willing to give up a little bit of service, that is also a viable option. So as we look at uh, off exchange, we're seeing, we don't have one group yet that did, did really look on the exchange, mainly because the tax credits, you know, very difficult to qualify for. The salaries here are a lot higher. Um, you know, the fact is, if you want a Health Republic, you can get it off the exchange. You don't need to go on the exchange. And what Oxford did, as Jamie mentioned, there's no participation on the exchange. And as a result, Oxford, had to be, Oxford was forced on the exchange because of their clout in New York. So all the plans they put on the exchange were limited to New York, New Jersey, only the Liberty Network, and all gated. Well, they were very clever because they don't want you enrolling in that plan. So whatever's, off, whatever's on the exchange is also available off, but Oxford has a number of creative plan designs. It has the National Network, the Freedom Network, no referrals, that's available off, which is why uh, most groups are looking to go off exchange to purchase coverage. Uh, so that gives you a little overview of on exchange, off exchange. I know it was uh, very, very brief. There are a couple of other options that groups have available to them. One is HealthPass. HealthPass has been around a while. It, it's, it's, the, it's been an exchange for years. Uh, ultimately, today they have Oxford. Uh, they have Easy Choice, which is formerly Atlantis, and they have Health Republic. 
And basically, there's a number of different plans an employee can choose from. An employer can elect a certain dollar amount to pay toward the coverage. Employees can pick the plans they want. Health Republic, Easy Choice, Oxford, um, you know, ranging in different premium price points. And they'll get one bill, one invoice. It's a streamlined approach, um, which is kind of similar to what an exchange is really all about. And then there's another company, uh, which is a private exchange called Liaison, uh, which utilizes Aetna's, Aetna's uh, plans in the 2 to 50 market. And there, the advantage there is their technology is robust. They use the Bright Choices Exchange, and employees can pick amongst eight Aetna plans to choose from, ranging in all different price points, a high-deductible health plan up to a traditional PPO plan. The advantage here is, as an employer, you can say, well, you know what, we're gonna pay $500 toward the cost of a single, $1,000 toward the cost of a family, why don't you guys pick and choose a plan that's more suitable for you? So depending upon your, um, your needs, your health care needs for you and your family, you can choose the right plan that makes the most sense. So and they also have ancillary benefits like dental, life, long-term disability, and an employee can use those dollars to go out and purchase the companies they're looking for. So that's a little bit of an overview. Hopefully it wasn't too quick. Um, does anybody have questions for myself or Jamie? If you have a question, just uh, stand up, identify yourself, and fire away. Yes. I know Matthew Wendell from Metro Health. The question I've been getting is, I offer health benefits. A couple of people want to know if they go on the exchange or pick a plan from the exchange. Am I responsible to cover a percentage of that the same as an off-exchange policy? What's the question? If I'm on, if I'm off the exchange for my business, but I have an employee who wants to go on the exchange on a different policy. Am I responsible to cover the same percentage cost? Uh, I mean, ultimately, an employee can go on exchange on the exchange as an individual to purchase coverage. You have no control over that. But for you, all you need to do is really provide coverage, um, whatever you're paying for, and you can continue to pay that amount for that particular employee or any other employee. Okay. Well, they can do pretty much what they want on the exchange. So in essence, I can go on and off the exchange based on the employee's no, no, you, are you talking about the individual going on the individual exchange? Uh, the what? individual going on the individual, but my company is on is off the exchange. Right, so you, you have no control over that. An employee can opt out and waive your okay. coverage. Waive my coverage and then... Right. But then am I still responsible to cover the same percentage? No. No. All right. And in fact, in fact, you, you really can't because one of the disadvantages and I jotted down, just in case you guys are completely bored and you wanted to get out of here. Um, I wasn't going to let you off the hook so easy, so I jotted down some questions that I hear on a day-to-day -day basis. And for my clients, or our clients, I should say, um, and one of the questions I wrote down that I see or hear a lot is, what if I drop my employer-sponsored plan and I give my employees money to let them go buy insurance on an individual exchange? Not exactly what you're asking, but similar to that. Um, and you know, our, and, and how this affects your your um, question is that when you provide employer-sponsored coverage, the money that you pay for your employee is non-taxable. Right? It's not taxable income to the employee. Right? They just pay. Uh, you, you pay the premium, and they're not taxed on it. If they and if the employee has to pay a portion of that that would typically come out on a pre-tax basis. If an employee said, I'm out of your plan and I'm gonna go buy some individual coverage on the individual exchange, okay, that money is gonna be paid on a post-tax basis. And in fact, you can't give them money to go buy it. The, the federal government has, has deemed that as not acceptable. So they don't wanna incentivize you by saying, here's 500 bucks, go buy it yourself. So you could do that, but it would be, in, you basically have to gross it up in their income, of which they're gonna pay tax on, and you're gonna pay payroll tax on. Uh, but you're not, to answer your question specifically, you are not required to, to pay anything if they choose to do that. No other questions? Is there, are off exchange plans always gonna be available of some one sort or another? In other words, or, or are all, are, are all, is everybody going to have to the exchange or something? Uh, I, I don't foresee that, that the government's going to require all carriers to participate on the exchange if they want to participate off. 
think it's going to be an option up to the individual carrier. Um, based on the results in 2014, again, um, and, and one of the real key issues was the no participation requirements. Um, that you know, anyone in the insurance business knows um, when you, when when you don't get a balanced risk pool, okay, and all you're getting are people that are going to plan on using it. That doesn't bode well for the insurance companies. Uh, and all you got to do is just you know go three, four miles down the road to Connecticut, and you look at their exchange, and they require 75% participation. So the insurance companies still could be adversely selected because you may say, I'm going to choose this carrier because of that particular doctor only takes that network. But the carriers know at least if a group of 10 come into the exchange, that eight of them are going to enroll, where in New York, if a group of 10 comes in, you know, one person may be very unhealthy and they may need access to coverage and they're the one who's going to buy it. We have time for another question or two. Anybody else have a question? Yes, please. Hi. If I have a plan that only comes to New York and New Jersey and I travel, what happens? The question, did you hear a question? Sure. Yeah, bring this low, I can't help it. Um, if you're in a plan like that or any HMO plan, emergency coverage is always covered worldwide. It doesn't matter if the hospital is participating or not. You go to the nearest emergency room and it will be covered subject to your plan, whether it's an emergency room copay or deductible. But that would be covered. The problem with that sometimes is with those exchange plans, if you have children that are away in college and they're outside the you know, New York, New Jersey, uh, they're only going to have emergency coverage uh, where they go to school. They're not going to have routine uh, coverage. So it's, it's, it's a problem. Especially in the Westchester area, where you have a lot of people that are working out of Connecticut. Actually, her question jogged a question of my own. What happens under this plan? With I, I know one can buy. Let's say if you're if you're a frequent traveler, you can buy uh, uh, travel health insurance from let's say American Express. Does this change any of that? Uh, 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 you know, travel health insurance, supplemental health insurance by uh, carriers like American Express. No, there's no impact on that. One more question. Mr. Nielsen. Could you give an example of, like, one of your clients where you're looking at an exchange program versus a non-exchange program? You know, give us some real numbers so we have a sense of the numbers and some of the issues that, that we would have to address in terms of selecting in exchange versus out of exchange. Well, if that's, uh, just because we're running a little over the time, if that gets to be a complicated question, if there's a website that we can share with our members and trustees that kind of answers questions like this, I don't want to. I don't want to preempt uh, if it's a long if it's a long answer. But if there is something that you can show that we can uh, direct our members to, whatever you guys think is appropriate. I mean, feel free to come up to Jamie and I after the meeting. I mean, one thing to point out is, I mean, we didn't give you specific numbers, but. Any plan that's sold on the exchange is going to be available off of the exchange and the price is going to be the same. Um, off of the exchange, you're going to have additional carriers like an Aetna, uh, an Emblem, uh, you know. So um, it's hard to answer that question, but, you know, kind of covered it briefly as far as the increases and what Aetna look like that relative to um, uh, Oxford. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? All right, thank you.